Welcome to Level Up, the show where we cover all manner of tips, tricks, and strategies to make you a better Battlefield player. Weapon balance and game meta is something always changing in any Battlefield game. And with new weapons added and older weapons changed, it's fair to say that nothing ever truly stands still. Thus, today, we're going to be taking an updated look at Assault Rifles, focusing on their distinct characteristics and playstyles, as well as the stats and specialization choices available, and that I would recommend. I'll include timestamps in the video description for those of you who just want to view certain weapons, but without further ado, here's a full overview of all of the Assault Rifles available in Battlefield 5. We start off with the newest of the bunch, the Breda PG, in my personal opinion, arguably the best medium and long range assault rifle if you can deal with bursting and fire modes, which in terms of the stats of the weapon, they are arguably unique with a maximum damage of 30 and a minimum damage of 22, netting it a 4 shot kill all the way out till 50 meters and a 5 shot kill from that point onwards. The fire rate of the weapon sits at a relatively low 423 rounds per minute with the actual 4 shot burst firing at 539 rounds per minute. The max size is restricted with only 20 bullets available and the reload times aren't fast with 3 seconds for the short and 3.6 seconds for the long reload. Vertical recoil on the other hand is decently controllable at 0.64 and the horizontal recoil is extremely low with 0.1 to the left and right. In terms of your specialization choices, really the Breda has two different compelling options. A more close quarter medium range focused path looking to really engage targets under 50 meters with choices such as the enhanced grip, light and stock, light bulk and custom stock. Or alternatively, you can go for a more medium long range build with quick aim, ported barrel, trigger drop and custom stock. Now the first specialization path very much focuses on using one burst to take out one target because it essentially, while leaving the fire rate of the weapon almost unchanged at a slightly increased 464 versus the previously 423 rounds per minute, massively increases the fire rate of the burst of this weapon, taking it to 635 round per minute. This paired with its 5 shot kill and thanks to the lack of recoil decreasing specializations means that it is one of the fastest time to kills available in Battlefield 5 but only up until 50 meters and only if you can land all four of your shots in a burst or you mix in a headshot there as well. That way you end up with one of the most powerful guns in the game but it comes with some clear caveats. The more medium range conducive long range build is a little bit more range vile, but it's a little more flexible. It has some decreases to the recoil of the weapon as well. And more importantly, instead of increasing the fire rate of the actual burst, it decreases the time between bursts to essentially nothing. Meaning that if you burst fire the Breda PG with the trigger job specialization, perfectly, it essentially will fire as if it were a fully automatic weapon at its maximum 540 rounds per minute fire rate. This of course in a comparative sense means that yes, the first specialization tree is a better option for taking out a target with one burst, but as soon as you have to burst again, follow up with a shot beyond your fourth shot, the second specialization option is the more competitive version. In terms of usage pointers for these weapons, there is a couple of general ones that apply to all assault rifles that I think we should cover. Amongst them, crouching to reduce vertical recoil by 20% in situations that would benefit from such behavior. Sparingly using hip fire with assault rifles as they generally don't excel at that other than extreme close quarter situations. And moving while shooting when coming up against accuracy reliant targets such as the SLRs, semi-autos, bolt actions or AT rifles at medium to long engagement distances. For the Breda more specifically, this is somewhat dependent on which specialization build you choose, but if you go for the one burst, one target build, the first of the two we've mentioned so far, you're very much going to be looking to use this weapon entirely on an accuracy basis. That means you have to nail that first burst, and if you don't, you're already at a significant competitive disadvantage. Thus, it is an extremely high skill tier weapon, and something your average Battlefield player, including myself, will not really be able to effectively use. That's where the second build comes into play, which is far more flexible, far easier to use, but still requires quite a bit of practice to get right, because at least personally to me, bursting doesn't necessarily come that naturally with the Breda. Another piece of advice that I would give is the Breda is essentially, much like the M30 drilling, two weapons in one. Because once you switch it into its secondary single shot fire mode, it is essentially an M1A1 carbine. 
It has the exact same damage model and thus performs exactly as well. Yes, there's some small differences with recall and magazines as well as specialization choices, but it is an extraordinarily flexible and capable weapon at long ranges when in that mode. It's extraordinarily accurate and will never need more than five shots to down a target. Thus, it's extraordinarily competitive and even more flexible than the burst fire mode would initially let seem. Rounding things off, the Breda is arguably, while the most difficult assault rifle to use, the best for all but close quarter situations, unless of course you're one bursting targets in close quarters with the close quarter build, and then yes, even in close quarters, it is the strongest weapon available. The Ribeiron 1918, very different from the Breda PG, is an easy to use weapon. It specializes very clearly at medium long range and arguably with a deployed bipod is by far the most accurate assault rifle available. Its stats are relatively typical for an assault rifle with its usual maximum and minimum damage at 25 and 17, the usual bullet to kill at 4 between 0 and 10 meters, 5 between 10 and 50 meters and 6 shots needed from 50 meters onwards. Its fire rate a little bit more on the lower end of things at 539 rounds per minute, its magazine size somewhat restricted at only 25 shots available, but with a good reload time at 1.95 seconds for the short and 3.066 seconds for the long reload and, of course, given it's a long range focused weapon, low recoil with 0.53 vertical and 0.1 to the left and right. Once more, in terms of your specialization choices, there are technically two different ways to go. My preferred one is interestingly enough, making this weapon slightly more aggressive capable because I find it not to excel just as much as I would like it at truly long range distances. Thus, in order to make it somewhat more medium range capable, I give it specializations that would be conducive to perform in close encounter situations when I simply can't help but getting up on that objective and getting in people's faces. Thus, I go with quick aim, then quick reload, followed by enhanced grips and the light and stock. If you truly want to focus this weapon on a more medium long range build, that absolutely is also an option and you therefore go with quick aim, custom stock, high velocity bullets and barrel bedding. Alternatively, the light and stock would still be a good option here. In terms of usage for the river roll, things are relatively simple. No matter which specialization choices you go with, you're going to try and stick to medium ranges because both the extreme long and the extreme close quarters are not conducive to this weapon's performance. You're going to want to be strafing back and forth when coming up against people like the semi-autos, the SLRs, or the bolt actions. And much like the Breda, the general focus with this weapon is very much on accuracy because of its low fire rate. You have to hit your shots if you want to come out on top of a firefight. The last thing I need to mention with the Riberol is it does have a bipod and that situation it can be very powerful and very helpful, but I would not play the weapon to use the bipod because yes when you're set up behind a piece of cover that coincidentally is the piece of cover you should be set up behind it is the best position it is most definitely beneficial other than those situations deliberately positioning yourself with or for the bipod isn't really good for this weapon simply because the bipod does not give it that much of a recoil decrease that much of an increase to its accuracy especially compared with the lmgs or mmgs of the support class over to the M1907 SF, the dedicated close quarter but capable at medium range assault rifle. And arguably, but for the Breda, it is the hardest to use assault rifle currently available in the game. And we'll get into the reasons for that in just a moment. The stats, however, are relatively simple. 25 max, 17 min damage. The usual four, five, six shots kill at the usual engagement distances for assault rifles. A very high fire rate at 770 rounds per minute. A relatively restricted magazine size at only 21 bullets available. Relatively poor reload times for that magazine, sadly, as well. 2.9 seconds for the short and 3.55 seconds for the long reload. And unsurprisingly, quite a bit of recoil with 0.82 vertical and 0.205 to the left and right. In terms of your specialization builds, yes, you can absolutely go for a only close quarter version of this weapon, massively improving the hip fire of it in the process. This would most likely result in you choosing quick aim or slings and swivels, falls by enhanced grip, polished action, and the line stop. But that wouldn't be my recommendation for this weapon because while yes, this brings the hip fire capabilities of the weapon close to those of some of the high RPM SMGs, depending on what specializations they equip, the real strength of this weapon is taking that ridiculously high close quarter damage and extending it beyond the sub 20 meters close quarter hip fire mania. This is where a more medium range build focused on quick aim, recoil buffer and a custom stock alongside a lightened stock would, in my personal experience, result in far better results. 
And using this weapon is very much so tricky, not only because you have to extend the range of the weapon manually by burst firing correctly and by quite a bit of recoil control, which takes quite a bit of mastering, and but for the Breda probably makes it the hardest to use assault rifle in the game, but also because one misstep, given the fire rate of this weapon, even in close quarter, and with somewhat reduced hip fire abilities and a limited magazine, means that you very soon actually run out of bullets, so mag management actually becomes an issue for this weapon as well, especially if you're playing in close quarters, especially if you're playing against SMGs, and even more the case if you're used to using 50 mag Tommies or Swarmies and not the more restrictive variants of those weapons with fire rate upgrades. Nevertheless, it's definitely worth the practice because once mastered, not something I can personally claim of myself at the moment, it is easily one of the most aggressively built and effective assault rifles available. We move on to the Sturmgewehr 1.5, the master of medium range in many ways, it is also kind of an easy to use and all purpose weapon. That's no surprise given that it is the first assault rifle that you unlock, but it does actually make it an interesting choice and likely one of the more popular amongst the community. The stats are what you would expect with a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 17, netting it the usual 4, 5 and 6 bullets kill at the usual 10, 50 and 50 meters onwards engagement distances. Its fire rate sits at 670 rounds per minute, giving it a pretty decent damage output. Its magazine size at 31 isn't too small and the reload times don't take too long with the short reload at 2.3 seconds being quite good and the long reload at 3.5 seconds somewhat less attractive. But sadly, there is quite a bit of recall to this weapon given its damage output with 0.7 vertical and 0.275 horizontal. That, yes, is more horizontal recoil than any of the previously discussed weapon, despite this weapon having a significantly lower damage output than something like the M1907 or even the Breda PG. In terms of your specialization options, yes, you could focus this weapon, much like the M1907, on a close quarter build with some hip fire upgrades. But given that truly this weapon doesn't have the damage output to compete with something like a Tommy or a Swami, alongside its still then poorer hip fire, I wouldn't recommend going down that path. Instead, I go for a more medium range focused build with quick aim, port to barrel, custom stock, and recoil buffer, giving you significant decreases to both the horizontal and the vertical recoil of this weapon and making it somewhat more controllable. This is, in my opinion, where this weapon really shines because it makes it easier to control, faster to ADS, and better while moving back and forth. And this is very much a weapon, not unlike most of the assault rifles to be fair, that you use a lot while strafing back and forth at more medium ranges engaging targets which are using weapons such as ZH-29 or any of the other SLRs, semi-autos, bolt actions or AT rifles. Accuracy reliant weapons that if they get their shot off and actually manage to hit you do a significant amount of damage and your best chance for survival is thus kind of making it difficult for them to hit you but continuously getting a little bit of damage in on them. Usage on the Sturmgewehr is obvious to what you would think, a little bit of strafing, some decent accuracy and some good recoil control will do you wonders with this weapon. But interestingly enough, I found quite a bit of bursting and tap firing to be especially effective on the Sturmgewehr 1.5. That comes somewhat as no surprise if you consider the fact that it's got quite a lot of recoil, but I don't really see that many players actively using this weapon in that way because you truly can extend the range of the weapon quite significantly by doing so. Lastly, of course, we have the STG-44, the easy to use and pretty much good at almost any engagement range assault rifle for the assault class. It's got the usual min-max damage model, it's got the usual bullet to kill, fire rate of 599 rounds per minute and a magazine with 31 bullets, a short reload of 2.4 and a long reload of 3.1 seconds making it decently quick to reload and very much manageable recoil with 0.6 vertical and 0.21 horizontal. Now, once again, there is two different builds you can go for, a more close quarter or a more medium range focused build, but much like with the Sturmgewehr 1.5, actually all the more the case given this weapon's lower damage output, a close quarter build isn't the most competitive option you can really go for. Thus going for a build focused on more stability, more accuracy, so just quick aim, port to barrel, barrel bedding, and recoil buffer, much like with the Sturmgewehr 1.5, likely will net you a lot better performance with this weapon. Because where the STG-44 truly shines is obviously not close quarter, it's medium and long range performance. It has relatively manageable recoil, it's extraordinarily accurate, a bit of tap firing can help with that as well, and it is just, for good reason, one of the most popular assault rifles in the game. 
Now, another tip I have for the STG44, which links it interestingly enough back to the Breda PG, is to switch into the semi-automatic fire mode. Because, much like the Breda PG, it becomes extraordinarily accurate and effective when put it in that fire mode. As effective as a Breda PG? No. Simply down to the fact that this weapon will still require one bullet more to down a target than the Breda PG, and thus it isn't quite competitive to something like the M1A1 carbine. But nevertheless, in a pinch, or when going up against targets that maybe aren't shooting back or don't have weapons that are capable of engaging at long ranges, this is absolutely a viable option, and something that I found especially useful, interestingly enough, in the Firestorm Battle Royale game mode of Battlefield 5. When it comes to using this weapon, beyond the points that I've already mentioned, flanking a little bit more, staying out of that close quarters, much like with the Sturmgewehr 1.5, but just all the more giving your weakened fire rate, is beneficial. You don't want to be taking on SMGs in close encounter combat in a one-in-one -one fight, unless you're a better player than they are, in which case, well, you can probably win with a pistol, but just in terms of pure weapon comparison and pure weapon competitiveness, you're going to be at a significant disadvantage there, and thus stick to your perfect engagement distance and you'll find yourself being much more successful. That pretty much wraps it up for the Assault Rifles in Battlefield 5 though. Feel free to share your own experience with the weapons down below. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.